My name is Nat. What is the rest of it? <laughs> <laughs> Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are going to be doing a book shopping vlog. Before you get into anything bookish, however, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as tell me in the comments, what was the last book you bought? So both of my best friends who are also very bookish are visiting me and this is Catherine. This is Allie. We are gonna be going to a bunch of bookstores today. So you guys are gonna come along with us. First on our list is the flagship of Half Price Books, which is the biggest half price books in the country. It's a warehouse, literally. So I'm probably gonna buy a lot of books. Yeah. Got some yeah. tote bags to go with us. <laughs> you really didn't want to give that up? <laughs> it was under my leg. <laughs> Bye. Allie, put your sunglasses on. Allie put my sunglasses on? I don't have sunglasses. <laughs> Bitch, do you Obviously. see these eyes? <laughs> Two guesses where I'd find y'all at. <laughs> I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it To my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks Feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight Never stop, never changed All the squad here to play And I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no, I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never cap in space I won't stop till I hear him say
I go again? Hey, you! I hope you're charging that a little bit too, I guess. You! That's the you. intro. That's the intro. <laughs> Hi guys, once again, we did not film in my car again because after Half Price Books, we got rained on a ton. It was ton. a tsunami. It was really bad. I think I got a little clip of it. It was crazy. We got stuck in Half Price Books. The lights went out twice. As soon as we got out, it was like, okay, let's just go over to Barnes & Noble and keep this moving. Now we're officially going to do the haul because we have lots of books. That's only mine. So it was like all, all of, of yours. <laughs> The first book bought this weekend was The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood from Target. Now, on to Half Price. I'll let Kat go first now. Okay. What okay. did you get from Half Price? I got John Singer Sargent in the fall of Madam X. She was a real woman. It's by, I didn't pay attention. Maybe Deborah Davis? That sounds right. It's right there. <laughs> so I got that. And then I got two Agatha Christie books, mostly because the spines were so pretty. There were actually like so many of them. And there was like each, every one of her books in a rainbow. A rainbow. Oh, and I wanted nice. to buy them all, but like I'm not that rich. And also I'd have to take Price it on the that. plane with me. Oh. So I got two, like the first two. Which ones you get? You gotta uh, show them. Okay. Her Hercule Perot. Christmas. Hercule Perot's that Christmas. That Dude's Christmas by Agatha Christie. And then Murder in Mesopotamia. At least you could pronounce that one. Um, Ooh. yeah, they're they're all about the guy Hercule Perot. You don't pronounce the H. Listen, I'm Americanizing it because I don't want to sound like a dick and get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Allie, what did you get from Half Price? I got Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I read her other series, The Kingdom of the Wicked, and I thought I'd try this one and it was pretty cheap. I'm intrigued about that because some people really like it. If you like it, tell me in the comments. I'm I'm curious to hear thoughts on this series. I'm intrigued to see if it holds up. So first off, I had to get the second book in Ronnie Lauren's romance book series. This is What If You and Me, and it is actually signed because Ronnie Lauren is from my area. So bam, that worked out perfectly. This one is following Andy, who is friends with Holland from the first book, and she is a horror author. I think she might have anxiety or something of anxiety. Cool. And I'm pretty sure she falls in love with the ex-firefighter. I also grabbed the third book yeah. since we were there too, which just recently came out and this is also signed so this one is for you and no one else <laughs> this is following <laughs> i'm curious i'm not giving it to you well this oh, one's following no time. this one is following eliza who i assume will meet in the second book because i don't remember an eliza from the first book i also got the thursday murder club by richard osman i've heard lots of positive things that this is like kind of a cozy mystery with a bunch of old people in a retirement home solving the mystery it sounds really cute right yeah you can read that one while I explain. How can they do that? <laughs> I also got Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. This is her second memoir. Her first one was really hilarious, but I'm intrigued to see more of her stuff because she has like three memoirs. That's kind of impressive, honestly, given that she's only known for writing. Can I say something real quick about that book again? On the back cover, there's that picture of the author. Doesn't he look like uh, Jess's cousin on New Girl? I think it was the cousin she accidentally dated. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Wait, that's really funny. Is she not an actress? No, Jenny La Lawson, literally, she's only known for writing. I'm speaking of someone else then. That's all she does. Brie Larson? Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> no, <I'm> Lawson. <laughs> Very different people. <laughs> Sounds but somewhat the same. I also got The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. I don't know a ton about this, but I believe it's like a mystery inside a mystery book. It's Inception sort of style, but I've heard positive things. Lana at Lana Ex Libris gave it five stars, so I trust her judgment and I'm intrigued. Also, I just like the setup because I found I really like books that do that whole like book within a book scenario. And then finally, I got A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. This is the first in her Charlotte Holmes series, which is like a retelling of Sherlock Holmes and Watson, except they're descendants. I think there's some enemies to lovers thing and they like solve mysteries on their high school campus or something. It sounds really fun. It kind of reminds me of Truly Devious if I like it and it reminds me enough of Truly Devious, I will let you borrow it, cat. Yeah, I could, I could get behind that. So that was it for half price. There's a spider on my book. I don't want to kill it on the book. How about, how about? I was gonna, well, I was gonna, well, it disappeared. I, was, I didn't want to kill it all the well, time. I was going to blow off. it off. I was, I was going to pick it up. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to blow it off. So Barnes and Noble. We also bought gifts for one another while we were there. Oh, yes, we all know what the gift is going to be. Those are included here too. I did not get this one there. <laughs> they like froze and I was like, what? Did they something, forget one of your books? No, something felt wrong. I was like, what the hell? Figured it out. So I got... 
two books from Barnes and Noble. The first one is Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. And this one is for Allie and it is going to be her Christmas present and I'm going to annotate it and then give it to her for Christmas. I've explained this this whole situation that happened before. I actually did a video reading the books that they annotated for me last year. So I'll put a link to that in the cards. Oh the God. other one is a Mexican Gothic. Nope. No. That's, God. that's, <laughs> that's from the best-selling author. Cut that out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but why would they put that bigger? I can't it's, read that. That's the title. Sorry. You literally made just a mark right down. <laughs> it's her book. It's Thank my God. book. <laughs> It'll be fine. The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Um, New York Times best-selling author of Mexican Gothic. Here's the thing. Moreno. <laughs> I took, what was it, like 12 years of Spanish and learned leche. That's it. I'm all the mix you were gonna say. I really I did not expect that to be milk. The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Thank you. New York You're Times best selling author of Mexican Gothic. <laughs> yes, um, apparently this is also not a Mexican Gothic. A Mexican kind of Gothic is another novel. That's a different book. No, but it, Gothic is a genre. Well, it's science so, fiction because Dr. Moreau is a science fiction story. The Island of Dr. Is. Moreau. Yeah, it's a retelling. Yeah, you read it, didn't you? Yes, I did. You read the original, right? Yes. I have no idea what this book is about. She said she wanted it and I was like, okay. Happy birthday. Yay. Yep, that's my birthday present. That's her birthday present for Thank you. <laughs> okay, so from Barnes and Noble, I got Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. Happy birthday, Nat. Thank you. This um, is the uh, actress that I know as Mona Lisa from Parks and Rec, and I love her because she has my chaotic drunk energy. <laughs> and then I got The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. Hey, Kat. Thank you. And then for Christmas. Those just don't get talked about. No. I don't know what they're about. That's a romance involving sports. Um, Amanda at Ginger Snapped Reads said it was very adorable. Um, I also got The Flat Chair by Beth O'Leary for Catherine for Christmas that I will be annotating, and then Nat will be annotating at some point. It's about two people who live in a. <laughs> it's about two people who live in a flat together. Um, but one of them is daytime and the other is nighttime. And they communicate via post-it notes and slowly start to fall in love with one another. I just hope they're smut. How can there be? They're not together. Um, I also got Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, which I got for Nat for Christmas. That I will be annotating, and then at some point, this empty space beside me will be annotating. <laughs> Um, I also don't know what this is about. I think this is about specifically a nanny of these like rich kids. Specifically special in the fact that anytime they throw a tantrum, they catch on fire. <laughs> like the human torch, which really is just so interesting. I really hope she gets paid well. I've heard great things about it. I've heard, I've heard it's very funny and very like heartwarming. Excellent. Pun intended there. Uh, <laughs> and then I got To Marry and To Metal by Martha Waters, which is the third book in a series that I, I honestly don't think has a name. Um, <laughs> What's the first book called? Uh, to have into hoax and then okay. the second one that's probably more well known is to love and to loathe um and this one is about lady emily turner and julian belfry who's a theater owner and they have a marriage of convenience that turns into love i, I really like, like this book i think it was i really read good. that okay I i've gonna, definitely read the first two I this one's say, really good you like that trope i've definitely so. read it was really well done i liked it a lot mm -hmm. i think i was going through my phase where i was like skimming books not you mean every day of your life <laughs> and then i got the paperback version of a court of silver flame this was the newest book in akatar if you don't know what akatar is i'm really sorry this is the wrong channel for you because i don't know how to explain it either <laughs> and i don't want to explain it so fantasy smut what Essentially, I mean, I love, <laughs> but not until like the second or third book, right? The second. Mm, there's technically smut in the first one, but it's not like really good. It doesn't like pick up smut wise until the second book, but They're... then like it's all downhill from there. What I bought at Barnes and Noble, so Kingdom of Souls by Renna Baron. This is currently the book club pick for the Pages and Color book club. I haven't started on it yet, even though we're supposed to be reading it already. This is a YA fantasy, which I believe is set in West African mythology. I know for a fact the main character is like the dog daughter of a power hungry queen and the daughter herself does not have much magic but she finds a way to start utilizing it but it requires her to like cut years off her life sounds, sounds pretty cool i think it's a trilogy i'm pretty sure so hopefully i'll enjoy this since i actually bought it now but reading it over a quarter of the year means i kind of have to buy it i can't just check it out from the library for that long <laughs> then i got okay i got just haven't met you yet by sophie cousins which i purchased to annotate for cat for christmas this is about a hopeless romantic who has a chance encounter
shelter with a attractive man. Basically, they end up accidentally swapping luggage. I'm surprised you haven't read this yet. I feel like that book and flat chair are gonna end up being very similar. Oh my god, Jersey! It has a map also. Ew, it's set in Jersey. Wait, 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 wait. Where in Jersey? Let's see if I've actually been to it. Wait, that actually is a Jersey good question. the the English. Oh, I thought island. it was New Jersey. No. My yeah. my saint's namesake. I like that it has a map. You don't really see a map in a romance. Not book. in romances. I bought that to annotate for cat. That'll happen. I also bought no. then I bought The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones to annotate for Ali because I love this book so much and um, I'm hoping she does too and I've just been wanting to reread it anyway. This is a YA fantasy about these like kind of zombie things that start to encroach on a village and the girl who is basically tasked to take care of them ends up trying to figure out why they're coming further into the village and partners with this guy who wants to map out the forest where these bone houses live. <laughs> Lastly, the final bookstore we went to was the single indie, which is in my area. Only one of us bought a book because, you know, we'd already been to two bookstores prior to that. <laughs> and I didn't even buy it for myself. This book. The Gunkle. Uh, it's Stephen Rowley. This is Nat's Christmas present for me and I will be annotating it for her. I believe this is following this man who ends up having to take care of his niece and nephew after his sister is in like a bad accident or something like that. And, and his... they call him Gay Uncle Patrick. Yes. Or G-U-P for short. And honestly, the G-U-P is my favorite part of that. I'm just gonna say that. It's pretty pure. Um, I've heard from people that this is very adorable, very light contemporary, similar feelings to like House in the Cerulean see hopefully we will find a new love with this one after we finished out with all the bookstores we then went to a comic book store technically we went to a manga store before we went to the comic book store but none of us bought any manga there then we went to the comic book store where we happened to buy manga <laughs> <laughs> we both got the same book yeah kat and i actually both got the exact same thing the first volume of soul eater by atsushi Okubo. I'm I'm really sorry that was a butchering. I will look that up. Soul Eater is my absolute favorite anime and I've been really wanting to get into the manga for some time now. Basically it is in this paranormal world <laughs> where <laughs> it is in this paranormal world where we are following individuals who are training with weapons to become scythes for death. And we are following specifically it's the Sith. No Sith. Scythe. Does he like actually become? Sith? Yes. Does he actually like Star Wars? Sith. Does he become the yes. sword? Yes. His that... little body becomes the sword. Yes. yes. Interesting. There are Meisters, which is Maka. She wields the sword, or in this case, the scythe, which is Soul, who is a. He literally turns into a. Scythe. Why does the gremlin boy have to turn into the sword though? Because he is considered a weapon. That's that's like that's, that's, that's what they are. The weapons are literally living beings. Interesting. Okay. There are multiple different Meisters and Scythes who we follow, but mostly it is Maka and Soul. I'm really excited. Uh, I actually made Kat watch this anime with me for quite a while, so she was intrigued and decided to start the manga as well. Does they have a Scythe and he like goes into it? Or no, no, he, he actually he turns, turns he like, completely. But like, can he do something like this where he like pops out? Yes, kind of. Okay. Who's the hot witch? That that is Blair. Right. She is, and she is so, just a hot witch, as so, far as I know. In order to become a death scythe, they have to kill 99 demons and a single witch. Anyway, okay, so that is a ton of books that we hauled. How much whoa, How much did we buy all together? 25 books in one day. That's what happens when, you know, you put three book lovers together and go on a bookstore crawl. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much for coming to my channel today, guys. I really appreciate it, and um, thank you to you two for joining me. Just deviated from the script. Below. Smash that like button like a boss. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you, bye! That was so long and uncomfortable. I thought you were going to say love you, bye with me. No. Oh.